Amazon RDS, one of my favorite services to describe and to demo. I'll talk to product manager Manish Dalwadi to learn a lot more. As always, Lee is in the field. Jeff, I think today would be a great opportunity for us to chat about relational and NoSQL stores. Thanks, Lee. We've got a busy show, so let's get started. Hey, Jeff. Welcome. Great to be here. Thanks for coming by. Anytime. Tell me a bit about what you do for the AWS team. Yeah, so I'm a senior product manager with the Amazon RDS team. And essentially, my role is basically to make Amazon RDS the best product it can be. Let's start by talking a bit about RDS. Give me the, the big picture overview and what, what it is, what it's good for, what customers like about it. <laughs> RDS stands for Relational Database Services. And what we are is basically a managed database as a service. And it's a bit of a mouthful. But the, the value prop is pretty simple. We basically let our customers focus on what's important to them. What I mean by that is a customer that comes in and basically has to worry about managing their database and taking care of sort of the undifferentiated heavy lifting is a customer that can't spend time talking to their customers and figuring out what's the best way to build an app for their customers. When you say undifferentiated heavy lifting, what are some of the items that go into that? Within the RDS team, when we think about databases, we think about two things. One, they're really hard to manage, and two, they're really, really hard to scale. And RDS is designed to tackle both of those problems. So for number one, being hard to manage, sure, taking a, a snapshot or a backup on a nightly basis isn't too bad, but if you want to have point in time restore with, uh, um, with an SLA of saying that my recovery point will always be within five minutes or less, well, then it gets a little harder. Or when, say, like the, the MySQL instance that's running your database comes down and fails, well, then you have to find hardware and provision it and bring it back up. Well, RDS does that for you. We'll detect the problem and we'll bring it, an instance back for you. And then the second thing that makes managing a database hard is sort of scaling it, right? So fundamentally, like RDS is built to address those two core things. We make databases easier to manage and we make them easier to scale. What kind of customers are finding RDS useful? Basically all types of customers are using RDS. Um, the way I kind of think about it is sort of at two tiers. One is sort of breadth of industry, and the second is breadth of use cases. And so in terms of breadth of industry, we've got you know, startups, social gaming startups like Gumi and Tapjoy on RDS, all the way to sort of news agencies like Newsweek and um, Washington Post running RDS. So basically the whole entire gamut of industries are using RDS. At the use case level, Basically, what we see, what we saw in the beginning is a lot of sort of dev test environments come in. And as customers have become more and more comfortable with RDS and sort of the, the different sort of production features like multi-AZ and read replicas, we're seeing much more production workloads as well. To the point where now we just see basically a breadth across the sort of dev test and production use cases. Now, I know you have a new release coming up. Can you tell us a bit about the new features that are there? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm thrilled to announce a new feature called non-RDS to RDS replication. And what that feature fundamentally is, is the ability to use MySQL bin log replication to move data from a non-RDS instance, which could be like an EC2 instance running MySQL or an on-premise database running MySQL, and migrate data to RDS. And the, the use case that we fundamentally are addressing here is the ability to do a near zero downtime migration. So in the old days, before we had this feature, a customer that wanted to migrate their data from non-RDS to RDS would basically say, okay, first I need to get a consistent snapshot and I need to send that to RDS, right? And if you're looking at like a terabyte of data, it's gonna take some time to move that data. Like laws of physics are involved here, right? So you can't, it's not gonna be instantaneous. And so if you have a production database that you want to keep running while you're transferring that consistent data over, well, then that, can, that database is going to consistently take reads and writes and take updates, right? So at some point, the data finishes and gets to RDS. And now you have a snapshot of data in RDS, and you have an out of sync master or primary database with all these changes. And customers then have to figure out, OK, I've got all these changes here, and I don't have the changes here. How do I get it over there? And so now with this feature, the customer can now say, OK, I'll get the, the consistent snapshot into RDS. And now all they have to do is turn on replication between non-RDS to RDS. And that delta between the two databases will automatically sync up. Once it's synced up on the RDS side, the customer then has the choice to say, OK, now I'm going to now send all my write and read traffic to RDS and fail over. I really appreciate you taking the time to come by and speak with me today. And uh, thank you so much. Anytime. Thanks, Jeff. It's been my pleasure. It turns out that Lee and I have some strong opinions when it comes to technical topics. Watch our debate to see more.
Jeff, it seems like a lot of our customers really have a hard time choosing between using a relational store and a NoSQL store. How do we help them choose? You know, Lee, I've seen the same thing, and I think it really depends on their experience, their skill level, uh, not to mention both the application and their scalability requirements. Yeah, I think there's definitely a lot to be said in terms of the application itself. Some things are just more geared toward using a relational store as opposed to a NoSQL store. Um, but how, even then, it seems like sometimes it's hard to, to decide. Well, one thing that happens is people sometimes take for granted that they get the ACID attributes, and then they suddenly switch over to NoSQL, and they're, they're actually utterly surprised when some of those properties don't apply to a NoSQL store. Yeah, I think it's really surprising for some developers sometimes. They don't realize, oh, I make a write, but it may not actually be there when I go do the read. I can't actually tell you how many times I've explained eventual consistency to an audience and have somebody say, that, that actually sounds like a horrible bug, and I sure hope you guys <laughs> can fix that soon. Yeah, and I guess, in some sense, they're right. From the customer perspective, why, why wouldn't they expect that in some cases? It's usually too difficult to actually explain the entire CAP theorem in front of a, a complicated audience. Cool. Well, I don't think we actually helped our customers come up with a better way to pick between relational versus NoSQL, but hopefully at least this was interesting to I them. I suspect in terms of like a lot of technical challenges, the answer is actually it depends, and you need to actually put some time into studying the, the technology in your application and making sure you, you choose what's right for the situation. Yeah, I think that's probably the half right answer. It works for me. Thanks for watching the AWS Report. Please follow me on Twitter and read the AWS blog.